this is Liz from Beyond Solitaire, and today I'm going to be bringing you a review of Quest, Awakening of Melior. This is a solo-only game. Um, it's a fantasy quest game uh, that involves rolling dice in an attempt to help your character level up and achieve glory. Um, you either complete a quest in this game, or your character dies, and so we'll see what happens. I'm going to start this game with a little bit of uh, gameplay, and then I'll give you my final thoughts at the end. All right, let's try out some Quest, Awakening of Melior. So I've already got the game set up, and when you begin to play, there's actually four characters that you can choose from. There's Crawls, who has the added benefit of occasionally turning into a T-Rex, so I'm totally going with him. We have Zebra and Melior, Thevis, and Nina and Mona, who are actually twins. So the character that you choose to play um, helps determine some of the choices you make in the game since they each have different dice combos and abilities. But I'm just going to go with Crawls because he seems like the most fun to me. So this is an event deck. There are five events that are specific to Crawls that I've already shuffled in. The rest just go with the game that you, and you would play them with any character. I've also set up what are called encounters. So I've shuffled all the encounters over here and then I've laid them out in this pyramid shape. So there is actually nothing wrong with knowing what's on the backs of the cards. You could, they represent traveling to different locations to attempt to have encounters. Um, and knowing the back helps you make some choices as you go through and try to level up. So as I've mentioned before, the goal of my character is basically to either complete a quest and thus attain glory or die trying. So I'm going to go through pyramids of encounters like these, each one is a stage, until I either level up enough to complete and, and receive a quest that I can complete, or my character runs out of HP. So I start at 6 HP, if I run out, I'm done, and then right now my character level is 1, my stage level is 1, because that's the first pyramid of encounters that I will be playing through. Alright, so let's play through a turn and see what happens. The first thing you do on any turn in this game is you draw an event card from the event deck. So let's see what happens. It could be good, it can be bad. Ooh, Cavern Discovery, Persistent Event Quest. So this is actually good because you don't actually know when or if you're going to pull a quest out of the event deck. So now I know, Bearer of the Dragon Skull, defeat the Shadow Dragon with combat. So this is a possible quest for me to complete. If I can find a Shadow Dragon, and kill it before I die, then I will win this game. So now we've drawn our event card, that's out of the way. We do our first encounter. So your first encounter in this pyramid is going to have to be this one. I'll show you how to choose and eliminate options as we go on further up this encounter pyramid. So let's flip it. Okay, so we have a tree bound villager. We're going to use dice to combat him. So what we know, is that his combat level, which is indicated in red, is a negative one. His survival level is also a negative one. For every, every one that we roll, it's going to lock into his combo as a plus one for both um, combat and survival. So what that means is that we're going to have to roll these dice and he could end up having better stats than expected. Crawls, on the other hand, has a survival that is his current level, which means one. He has a um, combat of plus one. So his level plus one, that's two right now, since we're still level one, stage level one. And then we also have um, our intelligence, which is also at level, which is gonna be one. So there's nothing too crazy going on there. So let's roll the dice to see how this goes. If we don't roll any ones, our best option is actually just to stop because we're already beating the tree bound villager on stats. Um, if we do roll some ones, we'll have to figure out what happens. Ooh, okay, so we rolled one, one. Our other dice were, oh, there's one other thing you should do for crawls. Every time you roll, you should see if you rolled a 21 or higher because if you do, he transforms into a dinosaur. So let's see, 6, 11, 15, 6, 7, 18. Okay, so he did not roll over 21. But if he had, we would be at T-Rex right now and that'd be pretty awesome. So this one has given a plus one to um, the tree bound villager. 
And what that means is that uh, they are now back at one and one. So the, their stage level was one minus one for zero. But now that they have one of each of these stats, they're both back at one. So what that means is that as crawls, I'm currently beating them on survival, but I only have one on combat. So what combos do I have that are gonna help me with that? Well, let's see. I have a four and a six that I can lock in for plus two on both combat and intellect. And I have five that I can actually lock in here for a little bit of extra survival. So what that's gonna mean is that my survival of two is gonna get another plus one for three. And my combat, which was just one because I'm at level one, is gonna get an extra plus two for three. Um, I could reroll this die, but there's absolutely no reason for me to do so, and I'm allowed to stop at this point. So what I'm gonna do is call the Treebound Villager defeated. And what that means is that all these dice will just go back in the pool. The Treebound Villager is now a card for me to keep for experience. And once I hit three experience, then I can level up. All right, so let's take another turn and see what happens. The first thing we're gonna do is draw an encounter card, or an event card, rather. Learned Tactics. So this is a persistent event, and it's a boon. That means it's a good thing. So if you have an encounter in your XP with the same name as the engaged encounter, you may discard that XP and learn tactics to defeat the engaged encounter. So what that means is that I have a Meltwood encounter here. When I'm going after, if I go after this Meltwood encounter, if I am having a hard time beating it and I don't want to lose the HP, then I am allowed to discard this card and discard my Meltwood um, encounter that I just beat in order to beat this automatically. So we'll see if that's something I actually want to do right now. So let's choose an encounter. We were doing pretty good with Meltwood before, so let's go with this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this encounter, and what that means is that I have to eliminate cards that are to this side in order to maintain a pyramid structure. So these cards will go away so that it's five, three, and one to maintain a pyramid. So I still have a pyramid here, it's just smaller. And now I'm gonna look at this Meltwood encounter. Ooh, I have a Meltwolf pack. Okay, so it says resolve. You must defeat the Meltwolf Melt pack with combat, survival, and intellect. So the thing that makes this special is that you actually normally get to choose the stat that you want to defeat an encounter on. So if I don't think I can take somebody out in combat, but I can do it with intellect, I'm actually allowed to do that and still beat the encounter in this game. Except in this case, I have to be basically um, able to, to defeat the Meltwolf pack on all fronts or else I don't win. So they are all stage plus one. That means that we're in stage one, plus one, plus one, plus one. They're at two, two, and two. So, um, Crawls is currently at one, two, one. These guys don't actually have, um, combos that increase their stats. However, every time I roll a one, it becomes locked here and I cannot reroll the die. So this encounter will continue until I either roll enough combos to beat him on stats, or I roll so many ones that he locks all the ones down and then I can't win. So let's have a roll and see what we get. Ah, straight eye. Okay, so this is bad. This is not a good roll at all because the Melt with Pack is just locked down two dice. So in this game, there's only one spot for a combo, but that any combo can be locked in repeatedly and you're allowed to lock at least one die into a combo for next time. So basically every time I roll a one, even though there's only one spot for a one die, the ones will repeatedly lock. This Melt Wolf, this Melt Wolf pack can get the same combo again and again and again. What I wanna do is I wanna lock the six here and keep it until the next turn. Um, I can't lock another six though. You can only start locking on a new combo after you've completed the first one. So I really need to roll a four and a five. Uh, let's keep going. So I got my five. 
We're just gonna keep rolling this until it's either a four or a one. Two, five, five, two, six, four. Ooh, that took a bit. So you can re-roll things endless times until all the dice are locked down. So a lot of this game is pushing your luck to try to see if you wanna go for that next combo or not, or if you just wanna stop. So this actually has worked out because my stats are now high enough to defeat this Melt Wolf pack. If that had not happened, the way this normally works is that when, a, when an encounter defeats you, you take the largest stat difference. So if, you know, let's say that theoretically this thing had me beat by two on intelligence, but one and one on the other stats, my damage would be two technically, but since this stage level is one, that damage is limited to one in this stage. The next stage it would be two. So the Melt Wolf pack is defeated. We are going to put him in our little experience pile. Hopefully we'll be leveling up soon. And now we'll go on to another turn. All right, so let's play another turn. Um, it will be the second to last turn of this round. So we've had two encounters. We'll have two more, and then this stage will be over, and we'll move up a stage, and hopefully by then up a level. So let's see what our event is this time. Unfounded Rumors, a scout event. Ooh, okay, so if you could enter a glow mount encounter, you can't choose to enter a non-glow mount encounter. That means we're stuck with this. Okay, so... If you do, okay, I'm not entirely sure what this means. If you do enter something that's a non glow mount encounter or just enter the encounter. Okay, I'm going to assume this means if you do enter a glow mount encounter. Uh, it's a little unclear, but that's what I'm going to assume it means. So you roll a die. If I get a one, two, or three, I cannot defeat this encounter with intellect. If I roll a four, five, or six, I cannot defeat this encounter with combat. So one of my stats is gonna be knocked out for now. Let's see what we get. A three. Okay, so intellect is not gonna work for me in this particular encounter. I'm gonna have to just ignore that stat and try to beat it on survival and combat. The other thing that's interesting about this card is that this little um, icon down here stands for what's called inspiration in this game. So once this round is over and the event has passed, I have a choice. I can spend one of my experience cards that has an inspiration icon on it to gain a combat or an intellect on a turn. So what that means is that I can sacrifice the experience that I might be saving to level up in order to make it through an encounter so I get some short-term benefits that I might need in that moment by giving up my long-term experience accumulation. So this is our current event. It'll go in the discard pile. If I, had, if I want to use it for inspiration later, I can, because I have a Treebound Villager that has that inspiration icon on it. So it's a decision that's open to me later in the game. So let's have a look at this glow mount encounter. That means that these guys will all go away. That's really unfortunate since I like the Meltwood encounters as crawls. Um, and let's flip it and see what we get. Ugh. Okay, we got a Crystal Sorcerer. I guess it's a Good thing we can't beat her on intellect because, good lord. Okay, so her combo is she's, every time I roll a one, she gets plus two combat. Ugh. So she's probably gonna kick my butt here. Uh, but right now, her combat is one, my combat is one. I have to increase my combat while not increasing hers if I wanna make it out of this alive. Let's move this to the center to make it easier for you to see. So let's see how this goes. Oh, also this level four plus, what this means is the stage level four plus. So right now we're just in stage one, but if we were in the fourth stage and we'd been playing for a while, I could not defeat her on, with intellect unless I could also defeat her with combat. So basically it forces me to use both stats in a later round. Right now, it doesn't matter. Uh, conflict is, combat is all we have at this moment. So let's roll and see what we get. Did we roll any ones? No, we did not. So that part's good. The problem is we didn't roll anything that was particularly useful. So I'm gonna put my four here. And the problem is that in order to, okay, well actually I have two options. 
I can call a tie right now because she and I are tied on our, on our combat stat. So if you're tied, what that means is that you can actually call a tie, defeat the encounter, and just take a hit of one HP and keep going. If you want to beat her leg like, and not lose any HP, that would mean that I have to reroll these dice, which risks giving her the combat that she needs to kick my butt. So I think what I'm going to do with four dice left is I'm actually going to call a tie. So it's one to one. I can defeat her on just this stat. I don't have to worry about that stat. So I'm going to call her defeated and knock my HP down by one. That way I have three experience points and I can spin them to level up. So what I'm going to do now is level up. I'm going to pay these three experience points to move my character level up one. And this does should go back over here for now. So what that means is that Crawls is now level two. That means that this stat is a two. This stat is a two plus one or three. And this stat is a two because it's my level that determines the value of the stat. The stage stat is still only one. So for this encounter, I might have a slight advantage. We'll just sort of see what I get. So let's see what happens. Hmm, what should I pick? Let's go for... Let's do the shadow caves. We haven't seen anything from there. Ooh, agony bats. Okay, so these guys go away. And now it is me versus the agony bats. So this stat is one right now because it's still stage one. It'll be stage two next time after I've done a new event pyramid. Um, encounter pyramid. Ooh, speaking of events, I should have drawn an event card. So let's see what it was. Ew, no, it was fury. So that means that every time I roll a four, it gets locked over here. I'm not sure what that even means for my combo. It kind of might mean that I'm screwed. Let's see what happens. So I have to deal with this event. Ugh. Okay, so every one I roll is a plus one combat for the Agony Bats. Every four I roll, which I would have needed to get higher combat, is uh, gonna lock over here. So I might just be kind of out of luck for this encounter. Let's see. Maybe I'll roll really high and get to turn into a dinosaur. 11. Nope, still 18. That's not going to work. So the good news is I did not roll anything that is going to help the agony bats either. So actually what I can do is since I leveled up, my combat is two. Its combat is only one. So actually, I could defeat this encounter with the Agni Bats and win the round. So now that we've played a little bit of Quest Awakening of Meliore, um, what do I have to say about it? I have to say that it's okay. It's a game that mechanically works, but um, I actually would like to see the theme come through a lot more in the game. So each of the characters has had something pretty dramatic happen to them. Um, Crawls, who we were playing with, um, after an event where the second moon rises, finds himself merged with his best friend, who is a dinosaur. Uh, one of the other characters has developed some surprise magical powers that she doesn't know how to use yet. Um, the twins are actually sisters who are on the run from something terrible that's happened in their hometown. And um, Thevis has, is on some sort of quest for redemption. And th that all sounds actually really interesting to me, but it doesn't really come through in the game. Because you're just looking for a random quest from the deck that, you know, basically these people have all had something really dramatic happen in their lives, but they choose to attain glory or die at just this moment. Um, there's this sort of idea that there's a mystery of something going on in Melior at the time of this game, um, but that mystery is not solved by playing the game. And I think that I would feel more attached to and interested in the gameplay if that mystery were something that really came through as I was playing through it. So those are my thoughts, and I hope that you enjoyed this review. Happy gaming.